Welcome to Charts Free webinar series. Today, we are pleased to have the Wiener Schnitzel group with us, David, Matt, and Paul, presenting on engaging and memorable communication on a shoestring budget. Welcome to David, Matt, and Paul, and thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Super Brad. happy to be here. Thank All you right. Well, thank you for joining our webinar, everyone. We're so happy that you're here. Um, our topic today is communicating on a shoestring budget. Um, really, the reason why we thought about putting this together was because uh, I'm sure all of you have found different ways to communicate over COVID, and that has completely changed the way that your organization had needed to communicate during that time. But um, we needed to find an uh, easy, effective, repeatable way to communicate that didn't really cost us a whole lot of money. So that's what we're here to talk about today. But first, let's uh, let's get to know the man, the myth, and the legend, Mr. David Kreitlow. All right, David, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is David Kreitlow. I'm the director of training here at Gallardi Group for the brands of Wiener Schnitzel, Hamburger Stand, Tasty Freeze. Truly a pleasure to be here with you all, and it's so nice that you joined us, and we're really um, enjoying ourselves. And let me introduce you to Matt. All right. Well, yep, you heard it from David. My name's Matt. I'm manager of training and development for those same three brands. I've been with the company here for going on eight years, uh, but been in the training space for well over 15 years. Uh, so that's a little bit about me, Paul. Yeah, I'm the senior training specialist here uh, with Gallardi Group, which are the parent, the franchise or company of, like David said, uh, Wiener Sitzel Hamburger Stand Tasty Freeze. And I'm approaching seven years here, um, but I've been in the industry, gosh, close to almost 20 years or so. So. I'm really excited to be here and uh, looking forward to a great presentation. So, Matt, let's just dive in deep about our agenda and what we're going to be talking about today. Yep, we're going to kind of break this up into three different sections. Uh, we're going to talk about the delivery, how we deliver our just-in-time training, and the methods of delivery, along with leveraging your resources. Um, there's a lot of resources out there that will help you uh, communicate uh, content that will take you a little time and little effort to put together, along with engaging and memorable uh, moments along the way. So you want that learning to stick. So how do you make that learning sticky? Icebreakers, fun ways to get people involved. Kahoots, which was mentioned at the beginning, but we'll see what happens at the end. And then prizes. So uh, we'll see what happens after that. But Paul, what's next? Yeah, let's talk about the just-in-time training, Matt. So just-in-time training, uh, for those of you that have heard of just-in-time manufacturing, this is kind of where it comes from. But the definition of this is as a learner, just-in-time training happens when you pay attention to the information that you can immediately implement. This means you only focus on the knowledge or skills applicable for a current challenge or skills gap you have identified. Now, what we do and how we implemented this is we scheduled webinars every single week but we only show the content on those webinars that they need to know for either the upcoming week, the next day, information that's given to them just in time. So think about the way that micro learning is, is supposed to be delivered. Um, and really the key behind micro learning is this just in time communication where you deliver the content that they may need to know right before their shift. This is delivering content um, more so in a training webinar environment um, that they may need to know uh, the next day or the day after. But something that uh, we couldn't do during COVID, which is get people together physically, finding different ways to do that in a cheap way. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. So going into more detail on the delivery, how we deliver this is we go and use uh, Zoom. So just as we're using right now, everyone knows how to use Zoom. Um, won't spend too much time talking about how to use that. But Teams is another option that people often choose to use that is also free um, for many organizations. Um, Zoom, uh, we happen to pay a, a very small amount to be able to use it, but I know there's free versions as well. But that's just one key is using Zoom, right? Using a very easily uh, uh, presentation method to be able to get your information out there. It needs to be easy for people to access. So I know Zoom, when you send out an email, you need to have everyone's email address, it needs to be spelled correctly. It needs to not go to spam. There's a lot of issues with that. What we've done is we use the Zoom LMS integration. We put our content directly where everyone already knows where to go. So we integrate directly with our LMS. That happened to be a free integration. And um, you can see on the screen right here, we have a image of uh, our weekly webinar, which we call Hot Off The Grill. This is information that's hot off the grill. It's, it's sizzling. You need to know it right now. Here it is. 
And um, it has a fun little countdown of when our next webinar is going to be if you happen to try to join it early. But um, this uh, eliminates the need for emails. This eliminates the need for people to click on a link, download an app, try to log on, enable their camera, all of this stuff. Um, because it's integrated with the LMS, their name and information is already in there. All they have to do is hit join. They're in the meeting right away. So you need to make the delivery easy. It needs to be seamless. And uh, this also allows us to track the visitation and those individuals that actually view it. Um, other than seeing the participants in the meeting, now we have metrics on our LMS that they've actually watched it. And then for those that couldn't join us live, we then post, uh, we record the session just like we're doing here today. We upload it to our Vimeo account and we post that link in this uh, spot as a uh, video embed. And so they can watch it uh, on our LMS and we can track those inf that uh, statistics as well. So the delivery certainly needs to be seamless. It needs to be simple. Um, so you don't want to have people searching for the link. What's the link this week? And trying to click on that or clicking on last week's link. So um, having that integration is certainly key for us. And if you were looking to do something similar, it would uh, certainly be the first place I would start. Paul. And Matt, we've got a great question here about uh, the platform that we use, LMS platform. Yeah, we actually have a very um, uh, proprietary platform, um, but it's it's built in the back end of WordPress using LearnDash um, and about a million other plugins. So um, that's how we've built ours. But um, I'm sure that a lot of the LMS providers out there um, have the ability to have a Zoom integration or already have it already. So I would definitely start with checking with your LMS provider. Great question, Tim. Appreciate that. Now, Matt, let's talk a little bit about resources, right? Yeah. And the resources that are out there. Yep, absolutely. So um, utilizing these resources is going to be key. Um, the C-suite, it, it starts at the top. Getting those uh, key individuals involved certainly brings the attendance. So uh, Rusty Bills is our uh, COO, and he is highly engaged. He's on every single one of our webinars, whether he's speaking mm -hmm. or not. And he is a great resource because he has a lot of knowledge and information because um, everything kind of feeds up to him. So he has uh, information that he'll want to disseminate um, at, at different times of the month or different times of the year. So he's a great guest and we interview him. And getting that content is just coming out of his head. So we don't really put together a PowerPoint. Um, we have a couple questions that Paul will ask him in this interview style that he's doing right here. But this information is just flowing from Rusty and, he, and he's a natural presenter and he's a natural talker. So um, it just is absolutely flowing. So Paul just kind of uh, pops the cork and uh, the information starts. Flowing. <laughs> and it's great because we utilize all of our C-suites, whether that's C our CEO, J.R. Gillardi, or whether that's our chief marketing officer that has something new that's crucial and important to get out as soon as we can. Or he's talking about our chief marketing officer is talking about some of our limited time offers that are coming to their restaurant. So they send all the memos out, but getting it a one stop shop where they can ask questions, your franchise community can ask questions to your C suites, to your leadership really is crucial and beneficial. Um, and it keeps that engagement going. It makes it memorable. It shows our franchise community how valuable they are because we want to engage with them and they want to engage with us. And it makes it memorable, makes them feel valued. Um, so that's just one of the many ways. Another great source that we use and we utilize and we leverage is our vendors. We have a lot of great vendors out there, whether um, it's Coca-Cola here. We have our executive sales um, VP here with us from Coca-Cola. We were going, we are going through a transition from switching from one soda brand to Coca-Cola now. And that's the great part because, you know, it was such a big announcement. Everyone wants to know the most up-to-date information. When am I getting Coke? When can I start? If you're like David, enjoys a nice Diet Coke. When can I get my Diet Coke out of Wiener Schnitzel? Those key elements were crucial, were important. And everyone on, was on the edge of their seat. They're asking all their um, franchise business consultants. They're asking anybody to get a hold of, guys, give me the most up-to-date for Coke. So what did we do? We brought them, we went to their headquarters here, not too far from our headquarters, and we interviewed them. We talked all about the excitement, all the different things that they can expect. And that was one of our most um, viewed uh, not just live, but recorded um, webinars that we had out there. And our franchise community was so excited, was so 
It just took them to a whole nother level of engagement. They were able to ask those questions that they had burning in their pockets. They pulled them out. They said, here, I got a platform. I got somebody that is valuing me and my time. And I want to make sure I ask that question. And it was just a great way to utilize that. You can utilize that for your uniform company. You can utilize that um, for your distribution company. All these different things, utilize those vendors because I guarantee you, if you reach out and have a phone call and say, hey, can you give me an hour of your time? 30 minutes to do a dry run and 30 minutes, maybe about 20 minutes to do an interview of some of those burning questions to have a little bit of Q&A with your franchise community. That's really going to help them be engaged and understand all these different things that go on. Um, so utilize those vendors. And this is just a great example here that we had on, uh, on February 2nd. Another great one that we use is our franchisees and our managers sharing best practices. Right. This is our franchise community. We have our shift managers. We have our general managers. We have our franchisees that are logging in every Thursday at two o'clock. Right. And if they can't join us live, like Matt said, they watch the recorded versions. They are eager for this communication. They're on the edge of their seats. They want to know um, everything that's going on because we are one. We talk about it a lot. And you guys may have not heard this, but we're one wiener family, wiener fam. And that's what we're all about. And we do this together. So that communication is important. So here we have one of our franchisees that's out in San Diego. Her name is Lee Terrell, and she's sharing some of her best practices of how she's getting all these SMG, our, our guest service responses, all these compliments back from some uh, simple, easy, shoestring, cost-efficient um, contest that she has. So we brought her in. We're interviewing her. Um, we're talking about some of the things that work for her. Then what happens is we have some of those franchisees. Well, tell me more. I've got a question about this. You know, how did you how did you get some of these things together? How long did it take you? And engaging, sharing those best practices really took that to the next level in the franchise community about engagement and about memorable things that they can make a positive impact on their restaurants. I know we also have a lot of hotel individuals here, but you can utilize other general managers in your hotels. So it's just those things that are important because who better to hear from than the your peers out there, the people that are the experts living it day in and day out. Yep. Another good one that we use is uh, celebrating uh, some of our uh, support center new hires and some of our retirements. Here we've got our brand new CFO coming in, talking about finance. Everybody loves talking about dollars and cents. Um, so he's coming in, uh, chatting. We're introducing him. We're doing a short interview with him. Like I said, again, it's about 10, 15 minutes, throwing some Q&A, maybe 20 minutes max. Um, we're introducing him, but we also celebrate those that are leaving us. Here we have David. Um, you David's know, not leaving us, no. What's that? <laughs> David's not leaving us, no. That's... No, no, no. no. Here we have David yeah. uh, giving a couple of small gifts and tokens of appreciation to our chief legal counsel, Bob. He's got a warm blanket there. We had balloons. We were celebrating him. And the great part about this is not only do we welcome those that are with us, but some of those that are retiring that have, you know, Bob here, Bob Matthews, that put in over 25 years of service to our franchise community. This was a way to reach all of our um, 16 different states, all of our franchisees and general managers who got to know him over the years to reach out there and celebrate him by asking him a few questions on the retirement, by thanking him for all of his years of service to our franchise community and also allowing through the chat box, our franchisees to thank them, to thank him, to show him their gratitude and their appreciation. And it was a two-way communication uh, that we had. And he was super excited. I mean, it was emotional to him, you know, he choked up a little bit. And those are the things that, you know, utilizing this platform to create that memorable experience for him, but also our, our audience, which is our franchise community of general managers and our shift managers was crucial and just had that memorable experience because again, we talk about, we don't just talk, but we live and we walk that Wiener fam culture that we have as Gallardi group. So um, just another great resource and how we um, go about this communication tool is crucial. But Matt, let's talk a little bit about making it engaging and also memorable so that it stands out and it has our audience wanting more, leaving them on the edge of the seat. I can't wait for the next week's episode because I know it's going to be fun, engaging, and memorable. That's right. How do you keep them coming back, right? You give them the content, you have the meat and potatoes, which is, you know, whether it's the interview, it's content coming from the franchise community, 
but you need to make it engaging and memorable. And, and usually that happens on the bookends. Um, so to start it off, icebreaker, um, you could have fun facts. And that's something, something that we've done in the past, having a slide as people are logging on. Uh, sometimes there's some dead air and you're kind of waiting for everyone to log on and begin. Um, having fun facts, just sharing something that could either be themed to a specific holiday that's coming up. It could also just be completely random. It could be about your brand. It could be about something you heard about um, when you were doing trivia at the bar over the weekend. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> recognizing a celebration. So you can recognize um, accomplishments and celebrations. Uh, so for instance, Paul's birthday, uh, that is not a lie. It's not a fib. It's not a joke. It is April 1st. Uh, he's almost going to pull out his license here and show you guys. But um, recognize that celebration, singing happy birthday over, over the air or um, honoring an accomplishment, uh, having someone that has uh, done something extraordinary as far as the guest comment is concerned. In our restaurants, what we do is we take a, a guest comment that's either been submitted by a franchisee or one that we found and highlight that individual and usually have a picture. And so that can be engaging and memorable, certainly for that employee and for everyone within that uh, restaurant or that store. Um, what we did at the beginning is, is have a uh, just a general question where everyone typed in. And that was that was an icebreaker, getting to know different people's favorite holidays. And we we heard that Paul's was Christmas. So um, asking those questions, right? Raise a hands. I know there's one existing question in the Q&A, which we'll get to um, in just a moment. But creating a Kahoot, creating a poll within Zoom, um, the, the Kahoot is, is a very, I wouldn't, it's not free, but it's inexpensive way to get engagement if you're going to use it all the time. Or you can use the free feature within Zoom and have a poll, um, along with having fun. And that's uh, awarding points or prizes. And that's what we do at the end of our Kahoot is we award points to the winner. And the points actually connect up to our uh, employee store that we have on our LMS, uh, where they earn points for learning, but they also earn points for being engaged in our webinars. And so we assign them points based off of their uh, uh, how they place in the Kahoot at the very end of our webinar. So um, that allows them to get prizes. And we'll talk about those in just a minute. But engaging and memorable. Paul, what do we have next? Yeah, absolutely. Putting it all together. So this is where we put it all together, right? So there's five key parts and we are working on putting this presentation each and every week. It's the intro, the agenda, the meat and potatoes, right? And the fun finish, Matt, because that's how we love to wrap things up because that makes it engaging, makes it memorable, and it makes them retain all that knowledge and information that they had. It's more of a checking for understanding, but it really in a fun, competitive way. So let's talk about the intro. You know, Matt talked about it. We love playing music. We love having fun facts, asking fun questions to keep them engaged. That's the hook, right? We're bringing them in. Now we're going to hit them with the agenda. The agenda is the topic of what we're going to, what they're going to be learning today and, and uh, how that connects with them. And that's through fun images and brand relate, uh, relatability. Those things are crucial and important to really get it started, keep the momentum going. You got them on the hook, but tell them what they're going to learn and in a fun way and how we're going to get there. Now you get to the mean potatoes, Matt. And if you know David, David's a mean potatoes kind of guy. Give me the steak and give me the potato. Fully loaded, <laughs> right, David? That's right. That's there, right. You notice there's no vegetables involved, which is Matt's <laughs> very David. <laughs> no need for a salad or anything there, Matt. The meat. It's the lesson plan. Using those visual aids and the fun colors that pop. You know, having animation, having fun little short uh, clips, whether that's a cartoon clip or a famous show, whatever that may uh, tie into what um, you are trying to teach them, work with them, um, have them learn or gain from that presentation. And then the potatoes is also having, having that additional communication. You know, we may present a new brand, a brand new limited time offer and how to put that together, how they should, you know, what those training videos look like. Um, what they need to do on the on the register system, um, what they need will be expecting and receiving from our distribution center from PFG at the restaurants and how to put that all together so they can prepare their teams for um, for the rollouts that'll be coming in soon, and they can trickle that information down all the way down to the brand new team member. Now the potatoes though, that is having our that could be our um, that could be our chief marketing officer or operations um, executive coming out and talking about what those flavor profiles were, what influenced us trying that brand new item and really selling it to the franchise community and saying and sharing those whys. Because, David, you know me, I love explaining those whys. 
We talk a lot about the what and the how, but having the franchise community understand why this is a brand new initiative or why this is so important to us or why this is going to benefit them and their sales, really having that leadership stand out, communicate that, be a part of it, um, showing that we're all one team and we're going to do this together and have great success doing it. That's the potatoes. You know, that's the why. Um, just getting everybody engaged. And of course, when you're sharing all this fun information and educational information as well, during your presentation, you got to have that fun finish that is competitive fun, uh, that is knowledge checking, use, uh, checking, knowledge checking using cahoots. Because I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure your franchise community, your general manager, your shift managers are all competitive, just like ours are, Matt. Everybody wants to win. I mean, they're vying for that top spot each and every single week. And it's fun, it's competitive, and it's great because, Matt, we're so spread out. We're in different states but they can log in and be with other operators at the exact same time every week engaging through the chat box, through um, different, you know, sending a text. Hey, great to see you again. Hope everything's well. All those things, that's engaging. That's fun. That's memorable. And then they get competitive, right, Matt? Because then they're like, all right, I'm going to show my friend from Salt Lake City or from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm going to take home the prize, those bragging rights, those swag points. I'm going to show them I know my stuff because I was engaged I was having a good time and it all stuck up here. Yep. Nobody wants to fall off the leaderboard, Paul. Definitely not. But That's what's right. the cost, right? With all of this stuff, we talked about the shoestring budget. We talked about a lot of things that we do and some some ideas that, that you can implement. Um, but what does this cost? So uh, Zoom can be free. Um, to my understanding, Teams is usually free if you have that application in your organization already. Um, there are other uh, webinar platforms that you can use. Um, we happen to pay like $15 a month for Zoom. I mean, that's just a quick and easy license and we can do whatever we want. So um, that is, it's a very, very nominal cost for the amount of time that we use it and how often we use it. Uh, the integration with our LMS happened to be free. So that was fantastic. Um, and then talking about Kahoot, Kahoot is $24 a month, I believe, um, for their, their basic subscription. If you happen to be an educator or or someone in the um, the kind of uh, K-12 space, I believe it's free. I don't think that really qualifies for many of us, but $24 a month um, for Kahoot, and there's an annual or a, uh, a monthly plan. And so, David, what's that cost per day? You know, that really works out, Matt, to $1.30 a day. And for someone like me who's very frugal, that is perfect for the budget. That's right. Uh, he's got a penny that he's pinching so hard Abe Lincoln's choking. So <laughs> we're, uh, <laughs> we're pinching that penny. There's 130 of those pennies a day will get you um, everything that we really discussed here, um, aside from really the prices that we talked about, um, which again, those you may already have some that are within your organization that you can provide, or maybe you have some other incentive um, that uh, those individuals, those are, uh, attendees find valuable that, that you can provide. Um, aside from the cost of um, kind of getting this stuff out there, uh, the content, right? We talked about the content, getting everything together, utilizing your resources. It doesn't take that much time. It doesn't take that much effort to put together uh, a communication, a just-in-time communication to get information out there. Um, everyone knows that it's it's information they need to know now. And so they're more willing for it to be something that may not be either as polished or something that is um, without a lot of glitz and glamour and, and uh, a whole lot of other noise around it. It's just they're appreciative of the information that they're getting um, in the moment. They're allowed to ask questions. It's a back and forth. It's the two-way communication. Um, so that is uh, extremely cheap and effective to be able to get that out there and utilize those people within your organization that have that information. And you know, one of the questions that Lisa has in here, and thank you so much for the question here, is uh, what type of equipment do you use? Well, I'm going to keep it plain and simple. I use my laptop. Matt <laughs> uses laptop and David's using his desktop over there. So there's no bright lights. There's no camera. David doesn't have that hook that says action. It's all on uh, our keyboard using Zoom. Um, our mouse, that's pretty much about it. Um, yep. no, no, no other special equipment. So it's really utilizing everything that you already have. Um, could it look better? Sure, absolutely. You could buy a separate microphone. You could buy a better camera. You could buy a ring light. Um, you could continue on down that line and, and have all, you know, tons of different stuff going on, but it doesn't have to be that way, especially if you're doing this on a regular basis, like Paul and I and David do this every Thursday at two o'clock. 
everyone knows to log in and they're very grateful and thankful for the information that they're getting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, now, Matt, Paul, what's next? Let's see if there's any other questions here in, that we have. What is the size of your audience? What is this? Uh, you know, our audience is probably about 50 individuals and that's live. Um, the replay audience um, after we do the live version and we do the recording is about 150. So generally we have about 200 individuals that are engaging with our content on a weekly basis. While the questions are rolling in, I'm going to get the Zoom started. Be, uh, um, sorry, not the Zoom, the Kahoot started. So those of you that want to engage, want to kind of have that fun finish, as Paul said, can hop on in using your cell phones or um, even using your laptop on a separate tab and having that on a, a different window. But come on in. We've got six questions for you. Uh, Paul, do we have any other questions? Yeah, I see here. How do you com how do you compile the best practices that you shared? Do people submit in advance? You know, that's great because um, we have a couple of different ways that we do that. So um, there are operators out there that want to share. They're bringing ideas to Matt, David, and myself, and we, uh, we invite them. We're like, you know, that's a great idea that our franchise community, others should hear about, right? So at that point, what we do is um, we start writing down ideas so we can use them because we like to mix it up every week. You know, maybe once a month, we do a best practice from an operator out there. Another one will be an interview. Then it'll be a guest service or hospitality plan. Um, we just kind of keep it fresh. You don't want to keep repeating the same thing because then it'll become more of a um, just going through the motions. You want to keep it exciting. We want to mix it up. You know, we want to ensure that our operators know that there's something fresh and exciting each and every single week. Um, so that's how we do it. And then we also recognize we have this great segment that absolutely costs us nothing. All it costs is about five minutes of an operator or general manager's time to submit an employee that sizzles. What does that mean? That means someone can... Um, fill out a small card with the information of a team member, an employee, a shift manager, someone who works in their restaurant. And we will highlight that employee and the great work that they do all for free and really give that pat on the back to that excellent, outstanding employee out each and every week with an employee that sizzles and will recognize not just them, but their whole restaurant for creating that culture and an employee that really strives to do great there. So All great right. question. Well, great question. Fantastic. I see we've got 30 people in. So that's that's great. That's, I think, a good chunk of the attendees so far. Uh, oh. Any final questions before we hit the start button and get this show on the road? I see a good one here. Matt says, how long is your typical webinar? You want to take this one, Matt? Yeah, it's about 30 minutes is our, our general webinars. Um, we try to keep them no longer than 30 minutes because these individuals are joining us usually from their restaurants. So their, their operations already in progress. We try to do it at a slower period of time for all of our restaurants around that 2, 2.30 area. So uh, we don't want to take up too much of their time where they're sitting in the office or on the computer um, away from uh, their guests and the operation. So uh, generally about 30 minutes, um, but usually less than that. Perfect. All right. That's the last question there. Let's go Perfect. ahead and dive deep, if you would, Matt, into our Kahoot. That's right. All right. You can continue to join. Uh, we're going to have the ID and the link on the bottom, but this is our Kahoot communicating on a shoestring budget. Here we go. We have got six questions for you today. Here is the very first one. It's a multi-select, which means there may be more than one right answer. Which of the following are some examples of resources you can utilize? This is based off of the presentation earlier for those of you that were uh, on when we were sharing this information. Is it new hires, franchisees, and managers? vendors or the C-suites. Again, if you're joining us, Kahoot.it, game pin 2034089. One second left for you to get in your answer. It was all four of them. All four are new hires, franchisees and managers, vendors and C-suites are all resources you can utilize in your organization to get information out and, and actually have content to provide that people may, found, uh, may find valuable and engaging. We're gonna see who is on our leaderboard? Alfredo is in the lead, and uh, uh, Shady is in second by a slim lead, and Nicole is in third. We have got Josh, and then we have G, who is hanging on in fifth place. But don't worry, we are going to have a lot more questions coming your way. Here is number two, and what we're going to do is utilize some different question types within Kahoot. Here's a puzzle, which many of you may not have ever done. Place the steps of a webinar in order. This one is based off of the slide that we uh, showed 
what different steps of our webinar, what different pieces we have. So drag these um, squares up and down, fit them in the correct order before you hit submit. We a lot, uh, allocated 30 seconds of time for this question. So uh, take your time and make sure that you have the meat and the potatoes in the right order. Um, you don't want to have those <laughs> incorrectly, but yes, the intro, the meat, the potatoes, and the fun finish is the correct order. This is also a great way. Um, we use it to show the build order of different things um, when we do these based on new products. So Alfredo's still in that lead. Uh, Shady is holding on. Josh is in third place, moving up into the leaderboard. KK is uh, doing okay in fourth place. And we have Nicole in fifth place. Let's go to question number three. This is an open-ended. What is the daily cost of this communication? David shared this. Players, please type in your answer. What is the daily cost of this communication? Make sure that you um, just use numbers. Just use numbers. Don't, don't use letters or anything like that. So that's one downside of using this open-ended. You have to actually type in exactly how it's supposed to be. However, we're going to see what the correct answer is here in just a moment. But this is another question type of Kahoot that uh, you may find very engaging that kind of shakes things up versus the typical multiple choice uh, questions that you would usually have. Here's the answer. Well, here's all the answers. It was a dollar and 30. Those were the two correct answers, whether you typed 1.30 or a dollar sign 1.30. Those are the two correct answers. Nine of you got all of those correct. So you got the points. Who's in first? Josh is all the way in the lead. Maddie is in second. Tim, Christina, and Shannon. All right. Here's the slider. Another different question type. In what year was Wiener Sitzel founded? Sometimes we like to throw in questions that don't have anything to do about the content we just shared, but are learning opportunities. Um, it could be important information, information that we're quizzing them on, uh, brand knowledge, um, questions about the uh, uh, safety topic of the month. So just different kinds of information that we share. But uh, this is another question type that you can use in uh, Kahoot that allows us to get a lot of different information. We have a lot of people that shared. 1961, though, is the correct answer. All over the board, we are uh, an old brand, but not as old as in the 1950s or 40s. Three people got that on the nose. I believe everyone in the blue got some sort of points that were kind of close to 1961. So let's see who is in the lead. Maddie must have got that right because Maddie has 4,128 points. Shannon, Josh, uh, Carly, and KP. KP and up 15 places. Riddo is the highest climber. Fantastic. Here's the penultimate question. Where's the next chart? Where is it? Is it in Los Angeles, Orlando, Louisville, or Seattle? This is certainly an important one. Tara's ear to ear right now, as is Braxton. So hopefully you'll see all of us there. But which city will you see us in at the end of July? That is the big question. Los and Angeles, Braxton Orlando. mentioned Louisville. it at the very beginning, Matt. So yeah, pays to absolutely. be on time, right? <laughs> yeah. It is Orlando, yes. And speaking of ear to ear, whether you've got the ears on the side of your head or the top of your head, we've got both of those in Orlando. So let's see who is on the leaderboard. Maddie is all the way in first place. Shannon, Carly, KP, and Tim is back up there. All right, here's the last question. What is it? It's another multiple choice. What was Paul's favorite holiday? All right, what was it? Was it Valentine's Day? Was it Christmas? Was it Halloween? Or was it Thanksgiving? I decided to say it again. I know for those of you that joined in the beginning, Usually we have a keyword um, at the beginning of ours, and that's to um, incentivize joining early right at the beginning so people can answer that question and they know it's almost a freebie for those that were there. Um, but this one is a freebie if you were listening. Certainly Christmas is Paul's favorite holiday. His second favorite holiday is his birthday, I would imagine, right? April Fool's Day coming up, Paul. All right, here is the podium. Let's see who is on the third place podium. Carly is in third, congratulations. Second place is Shannon dancing around there, but who does the winning uh, spot go to? The top dog, Maddie is the top dog. Congratulations to Maddie in fourth and fifth place, KP and Tim. That is our cahoots. Yeah, Thank so that was you. fun. That was engaging, Matt. Yeah. Um, that was exciting. We have one more question before we wrap this up. It says, do team members have the ability to see this webinar? For us, we have it from shift manager and up. Um, but the great opportunity about this is that we have um, we have our operators and our general managers, even our shift managers, that if they really feel that there's a lot of value, not only are they going to teach that to their team members, but they're also going to open up the video and show those key elements of what that lesson plan was 
relating to hospitality, relating to uh, those teachable moments, the lesson plans that we're putting together that are short 10, 15 minutes um, on there. So it can trickle down, but for us, um, and it is an ability that you could have um, if it does relate to your team members, this is more leadership related information that serves from the top and then could be trickled down, but I'll kind of leave that up to uh, up to you. So, uh, but for us, it starts from leadership and up. David, do you have anything to add to that? No, I don't. I think that was a great answer. And I think it's a, a great tool for everyone to be able to use and really help them out. Yeah, perfect. I don't see any more questions. So uh, we just want to give you guys a big thank you for joining us and feel free to reach out to any one of us. We're always happy to answer questions and really glad that you're all able to join us. Yep, awesome. Really Thank you so much to David, Matt, and Paul. This was great information. And thanks again for joining us today. Uh, thank you to everyone else for joining us today as well. Be feel free, excuse me, to take a look at all of our prior webinars, which have been recorded and are available on our website at chart.org. We hope you can join us at another chart event in the future. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you all soon. Awesome.